Carroll's pitch was even more effective when it was done one-to-one. -one. A smooth-talking spokesman speaking to a susceptible buyer. Boy, that's good. Especially when it's a lucky. I think you had to believe him, you know? He had to be somebody that you could, that could look you in the eye and say, hey, you can use this cigarette. This cigarette's the greatest. I use it, and, you know, that kind of thing. As for taste, I can only point to the fact that last year, more smokers changed to Kent than to any other cigarette in America. They must like I can see their faces as, as I think back. You Dennis James is one I obviously remember. Uh, and, and people like him who did stand-up commercials, in effect. I mean, they were, they were really salesmen. But folks, this is Dennis James. You know, they ask you to do a lot of things with cigarettes today. They ask you to sniff them, to try them on your eyes, to try them on your nose, to try them on your throat. Well, I'm going to ask you to do something that's completely revolutionary. I'm going to ask you to smoke a cigarette to see if you like it. You but Dennis James gold sold gold a cigarette the way, the way Sinatra had sold a song. For your own rich, wonderful pleasure, because that's important. Yes, sir. -y. Yes, pleasure. Real pleasure. At that time, we said, if you smoke, you smoke for pleasure. You know, in one of my commercials, I said something about the people tell you they smell good, or they this good, or they are that good. All I'm telling you, if you enjoy a cigarette and smoking for pleasure, you'll get a treat instead of a treatment with an old gold cigarette. So give them a try. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Smoke the cigarette made by tobacco men, not medicine men. Get old golds today. Certainly an endorsement from a cool right, TV announcer or an affable host was effective, but cigarette manufacturers enlisted an even more believable figure from 1950s middle-class life, the family doctor. Is it true, Miss O'Brien, that you visited a famous throat specialist every week for a 30-day period and that he carefully examines your throat each time? It is. Is it true that you smoke camels and only camels during those 30 days? That's true. Will you tell us what the doctor told you? He said there wasn't any sign of irritation in my throat from smoking camels. And have you anything to add to that statement? Yes. My doctor's report just proved what my own throat told me about camels. They're wonderfully mild. And the flavor? Ah. Thank you, Miss O'Brien. And happy smoking. But why do these wonderful things happen when I change to Philip Morris? Because day after day, you'll be smoking the cigarette recommended by eminent nose and throat specialists to patients who smoke. The one cigarette proved definitely milder than any other leading brand. If your good health isn't all that it should be, we can't help you. Better call on your MD. If it's double talk you wish, we confess that's not our dish. But if you want a treat instead of a treatment, if you want full measure of deep down smoking pleasure, if you want a treat instead of a treatment, smoke old goals. For a treat instead of a treatment, uh, try our brand. It was uh, a very calculated effort to, uh, to sow seeds of doubt into uh, the average person who is now being told by doctors' organizations uh, and by medical journal articles that there was real health hazard in smoking tobacco cigarettes. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand named most was Camel. This wasn't a hard thing for them to prove because it was the leading selling cigarette at the time, so more doctors, more plumbers, more housewives, more of everybody uh, smoked uh, Camels than any other cigarette. The makers of camels are pardonably proud of the standing of this cigarette among doctors. It was very important to be able to say, in effect, that the medical community has endorsed this one, a clear implication being they've chosen it because it's safer, or it's safe. If Americans bought the doctor's prescription for camel cigarettes, and they did, then competing brands reasoned they could boost sales in kind with other professional endorsements. The favorite cigarette of scientists, educators, bankers, and lawyers is Kent. Perhaps the irony of what we know now and how little was understood then is no better illustrated than in a naive relationship between the Heart Fund and Old Gold Cigarettes, a special edition of Ted Mack and the original Amateur Hour. The makers of Old Gold Cigarettes present Ted Mack and the original Amateur Hour. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, every week on this show, 
our little girlfriends, the Old Gold Dancing Cigarette Pack and the Little Matchbox, come out here and do a dance dedicated to Old Gold Cigarettes. So we explained to them that this week, after all, we were just dispensing with commercial announcements, so both of them very cutely wiggled the box a little bit and said, uh, well, can't we dance for the New York Heart uh, Campaign, the 1950 Heart Campaign? So I spoke to Ted, and Ted looked up at me and said, Dennis, I think they should. And I think they should, too. Still right now, it's the Old Gold Dancing Cigarette Pack, the little matchbox, their contribution to the heart campaign as they dance to How About You. Here they are. Two years later, a magazine article appeared which would change the tune of Old Gold and other tobacco companies as well. Beginning in 1952, Reader's Digest ran a series of articles at that time. One of the articles was called Cancer by the Carton. And uh, people stopped smoking, at least a lot of people stopped smoking. At that point, um, the entire debate changed. And the way people began to look at smoking as an issue changed. Mr. and Mrs. United States, the topic of very great interest this week was the controversy over cigarettes and cancer of the lung. Now my editorial opinion is this. The scientists may be unconvinced that the cigarette is guilty, but I am fully convinced that it is very far from innocent. They were starting to say, hey, cigarettes cause cancer, and doctors were saying cigarettes cause cancer, and they said, look, we better change our attack and we better say, you know, here's a cigarette you can trust. And I said, that's silly. Remember what I say about it? Integrity. Somebody else would have to say that. It would not be right me all those years on the air saying, we're tobacco men, we're not medicine men. And all of a sudden, I got a PhD in psychology or something. Now I'm going to be a medical man. I said, no, look, I've got two years left on my contract. I'll step aside without any remuneration of any kind. And if this cancer scare goes away, if this falls, I'll come back. Well, it never went away. What was the impact of the so-called cancer scare of the early 1950s? Well, sales dropped initially. The tobacco industry conducted research. And advertisers found new ways to market cigarettes. When Time Machine returns, that marketing comes into focus with the help of crush-proof boxes and foolproof advertising. By the mid-1950s, more than half of all adults in the U.S. smoked. But what brand? If the first wave of cigarette TV ads were designed to get people hooked, then the second effort was to develop brand loyalty. That was a real marketing challenge, and it was achieved right where Madison Avenue crossed Tobacco Road. <whistles> Cool enough till you come up to cool. You get a lot to life with a Marlboro filter, flavor, pack or box. Light an oasis and you'll say, here's the freshest taste in smoking today. No other cigarette is so rich tasting, yet so mild as camel. What's the name of that tune you were humming? Is it from a Broadway show or movie? Broadway show? Movie? No. It's just that nice Salem song, that's all. And what are the lyrics? I thought you'd never ask. You can take Salem out of the country, but... Cigarettes filtered the taste. Television filtered the information. The word was out filters were in. The world's most thoroughly tested filter. Winston has a pure white modern filter. Parliament's built-in filter mouthpiece removes much of the tar all cigarette smoke contains. 
Only Lox filter has two outer sections plus an inner chamber of charcoal granules. Compare. Extra filter length for spring's lighter taste. Deep set, recessed filter. Set deep to let you smoke clean. What is filter smoking coming to? With a crowded marketplace, advertisers look for new gimmicks to sell cigarettes. They stretch them a silly millimeter longer. And that takes some getting used to. They offered the flip-top box. I like things that are well designed. This box is interesting and practical. There was the waterproof pack. Paxton, in the world's first Humaflex pack. Moisture proof, vacuum formed to keep cigarettes twice as fresh and flavorful as any other package can. There was even an appeal to patriotism, which saw camels salute sick veterans. Each week, the makers of camels send gift cigarettes to hospitalized servicemen, servicewomen, and veterans. This week, three camels go to Veterans Hospitals Fort Wayne, Indiana, and Fort Thomas, Kentucky. The Clovis Air Force Hospital, Clovis, New Mexico, and to all hospitals operated by the Caribbean Command of the United States Army. To the military air transport service, which evacuates virtually all overseas... Competition was so intense, one manufacturer offered more than just the promise of great taste, longer length, or a smoother smoke. Raleigh, never tried them before. Try them. You'll like them. Say, this is a good cigarette. Tastes great. What's this coupon? That's uh, something extra you get with Raleigh's. I got my watch for Raleigh coupons. I got my son a transistor radio. That's how I got my new ball. And this new bag, too. This rod and this reel. That's how we got our new croquet set. My wife got us a food blender. And we got a hobby horse for my son. Will there be anything else, sir? Uh, would you get me a pack of cigarettes? <laughs> and make them Raleigh's. The idea was to get people to love the cigarette they smoked at all cost. Us carry from smokers would rather fight than switch. The fight was on. But the rules in TV were changing. The reason? An embarrassing quiz show scandal in the late 1950s. The government found that some contestants were given the answers to difficult questions in advance. Certain quizzes were rigged. Went up till I think the year was 59. The quiz scandals were what took the advertisers out of controlling a lot of primetime television. As soon as, the, as soon as the government stepped in on the quiz scandals and the, and the government went to the networks and said, you are now responsible for everything that goes on the air. And the networks who had been looking for an excuse to sort of take over and control them, sort of self-righteously said, well, okay, now we'll do it. And they took them over. To the audience, the new era of television programming looked very much like the old one, drama, comedy, variety. But instead of shows being controlled by advertising agencies and their clients, sponsors generally bought ad time on the shows. 77 Sunset Strip. Brought to you by Salem Cigarettes. The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis is brought to you by Marlboro. The second half of Rawhide is brought to you by Cool, the cigarette with extra coolness you can feel in your throat. Tonight, Bachelor Father was brought to you by Dual Filter Tarritons. The Flintstones, brought to you by Winston, America's best-selling, best-tasting filter cigarette. Uh, Winston tastes good, like a cigarette should. When Time Machine continues, the Surgeon General and Congress try to stamp out cigarette ads on TV. The networks fight to keep them on.